When you use a knife to prise open a can of paint, you are using a simple machine called a lever. In fact, levers are the basis of many tools that we use every single day. Welcome back to Design Technology On Demand. My name is Charlotte and I try to make weekly videos helping you to succeed in your Design and Technology GCSE. I just want to say a massive thank you to anybody that has already hit that subscribe button. If you haven't already, it's absolutely free and it does help to support my channel's growth. By the end of this video, you should be able to name different classes of levers and be able to identify which class they're within. So grab yourself a pen and some paper and let's get to it. Let's take it all the way back to the basics. What is a lever? It's a simple machine. It is made up of a solid bar and has a point where the bar is able to pivot. Levers are responsible for making our lives a little bit easier to lift heavy materials, move tight objects and cut things. This is called mechanical advantage. So how do levers work? The way levers operate is an effort that is applied to a certain point. At a different point, it moves a load by using a balancing point. Okay, so what does that mean? It depends on three key points. The input force or effort needed, the output force that moves the load, and the fulcrum, the point the lever pivots or rotates at. Let's visualize this with the seesaw. There is a solid bar with a pivot point. On one end, we load it up with a weight, and on the other end, we have someone applying a force by pushing down. To work out the mechanical advantage, you divide the load by the effort needed. So in this case, 200 over 100, which will equal 2. Let's continue with that seesaw. Two twin brothers sit either end of the seesaw. They both weigh the exact same. This creates an equilibrium. This is when the load and effort is the same and equal distance away from the fulcrum. Let's move one of the brothers and replace him with the father. The father is two times heavier than the son. In order to create balance, we have to move the heavier weight, the father, closer to the fulcrum, exactly half the distance of the sun. Okay, so that's quite a lot to take in already. First point, a lever needs an input force, effort, to create an output force on a load, a bar with a pivot point known as a fulcrum. Point two, the mechanical advantage is calculated by dividing the load by the effort. Equilibrium is when the load and effort are the same. And point four, if we need to create balance, move the heavier mass closer to the fulcrum. So how are levers grouped together? It all depends on the position of the fulcrum, effort and load, in what order they will follow. This then determines the type of class of lever it will go into. There are three classes of lever, first, second and third class lever. First class lever follows the order of effort, fulcrum, load where the second class lever follows effort, load, fulcrum, leaving us with the third class lever as fulcrum, effort and load. So what is a first class lever? Class one levers are arranged so the fulcrum is positioned between the load and the effort. This class of levers works when an effort is applied to one end. This then moves the load located at the opposite end. A downward force is applied. It results in the load moving upwards. This is why it is known as the seesaw lever. The direction of the force changes within this lever. If the fulcrum position is changed, it can affect the amount of force needed to move that object. Moving the fulcrum closer to the load will reduce the amount of force needed to move that object. Some examples of first class levers are scissors, crowbar, pliers, claw hammer, weighing scales, and a seesaw. So how is a second class lever different? First class levers are arranged so that the fulcrum is placed at one end of the lever, the effort at the other end and the load within the center. Some examples of second class levers are a wheelbarrow, a nutcracker, a bottle opener, leaving us with what is a third class lever. Third class levers are arranged with the effort positioned between the fulcrum and the load are mostly used for moving small or delicate items. And some examples of a third class lever are some tweezers and a stapler. So what are the key takeaways of this video? Mechanical advantage is when the force produced by a machine and the force applied to it is used to assess the performance of that machine. Effort, load and fulcrum make up a lever. It depends on the order of the effort, load and fulcrum to determine the class of lever. There are three classes of levers. Class 1 lever is a fulcrum position between the load and the effort, for example a seesaw. Class 2 lever, the fulcrum is placed at one end of the lever, the effort at the other and the load within the centre, for example a wheelbarrow. Class 3 lever, the effort positioned between the fulcrum and the load, for example tweezers. 
Let's end this video with a question. Make sure you put your answers in the comment box below. What class of lever best describes a crowbar? If you found value within this video, then please do hit that like and subscribe button to help support my channel's growth. Do make sure you check out some of my other videos linked in the description box below. See you in the next video.